Oh man, like... I... I, I don't like ragging on people, but I don't know if you've ever heard of Voice Legend before. What? Uh, there's a guy uh, on there's a guy on YouTube called Voice Voice Legend, and he did a uh, a very long stream uh, for Crash about like why it's the uh, architect of his suffering or whatever. Um, I don't know I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Mm, uh, I don't know. Uh... Not ringing a bell. Yeah, uh, well, I I do um I do symp sympathize with him for the crash stuff, and a lot of his points made sense. But I um I uh, ca caught a stream uh, the of uh, the other night, um, and it was it was just playing through Spyro One, and you know the the like. I don't, I don't know, like, he, he seems very cynical about everything, and I, I just don't like that kind of mindset, because, um, because he seems very against Reignited Trilogy, and I don't really understand why, um, because I, I remember him saying something like, um, they're, they're trying to sell you fake versions of the original games, and I'm just kind of sitting there like, yeah, how, how dare they um, try and remake beloved classics of the Crash and Spyro trilogies um, and try to revitalize fra the franchises. Because, like, I, I, get, I get the mindset that you want the franchises to branch out and do unique things. But if he wants new stuff so badly, I hope he bought Skylanders. Yeah. Cause like, uh, um, like, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of how to like talk about this right, but like, you can't. You can't really um, expect something really out there this like right now and I mean um you can't well, I mean, you can't could, I, mean, I mean yeah but it's like unrealistic a new game without having to rely on remakes they had ports but they didn't really waste development time on remakes yeah and I mean I he did uh I, I do understand having concern about, um, the, like, I get, I'm getting wrecked, <laughs> uh, but the insane thing, and like I said, like, it, like, if they handle things right, it won't be an issue, so I, I can understand having a concern with that, but just completely writing everything off, uh, Activision off, and saying, like, oh, they ju they're, they're just gonna milk insane and, uh, not care about moving on to the series is is very like very cynical and uh it like we and insane insane just came out last year and it's kind of silly to expect something super new and different this early on so i think i i find that kind of really silly and I don't know. Just in, in general, he just seems like a very negative guy. Like he just like it was like um, he he rag, rag, ragged on about uh, like just gay ne uh, modern gamers in general. It's like we uh, decorate each other a lot, which to an extent is true. And there are some people in in the gaming community that are. Uh, Pretty, uh, pretty bad sometimes, but that's not the majority. And most of us just want to have a conversation about games, which I don't really see the problem with. And um, what's that little dog explorer from the first episode of Samurai Jack? Kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hmm. Oh, my little I can, perhaps, based on what I'm hearing from your side of the story anyways, I can uh, perhaps understand his point of view to an extent of what we're trying to figure. I don't think you have to remake old games to revive a series. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't. But... I think this... I think you... Uh, I, I think it was it, it's pro it was probably the best option they could have gone gone with, especially with a crash. Uh, like make people uh, re familiarize people with the crash series, and you know do the same like do the same thing with Sparrow, and hopefully we'll see new games uh, in the future. Um, I'll like, accept them as they are on the condition that they don't do things. What I Whatever, I'll accept this because one, I was actually I've wanted remakes of these games for years, and two, if they give us this, we won't have to ask them to make a carbon carbon copy of the old games when they get to an actual sequel. Yeah. Because I mean, at least with this, this we can... hmm. We can get this over, get the nostalgia out of the way, first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah, but like... I don't know, I, I, I understand a lot of the concern, but... You know... I think it's too early to... Right I think it, yeah, I think it's just too early to completely be on the negative side and I'm just right now I'm just having a just kind of having a wait and see approach to things um, I'm very curious about the crash level and uh, you know see what thing what they decide to do from that point um, I'm having a wait and an approach to this game's camera right now yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, so these enemies are giving me... Giving me a rough time. Uh, I, I, I don't have any personal grudges to, towards Voice Legend, but... Um... Yeah. Uh, I... Unless you would feel, like, really depressed about gaming and stuff, I wouldn't really recommend watching his, uh... Uh, streams or whatever because I I had to sit back and question if he even liked anything Does he? I Well apparently well uh, and Apparently the, the he there's like there was a um, a game he thought of getting um, I forget what what it is, but he saw reviews and said, and 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 the, they all said it was bad or whatever. But then he just said screw it, bought the game anyway, and he thought it was really good, and he found it bogus <laughs> that reviewers, uh, like scored it, gave it really low scores, and he went on about how, uh. He ragged on about how reviewers, uh, are, like, shouldn't, shouldn't be, like, people's opinions or something? And it should be more of the objective things? But, like, I, I find that, like, I find that mindset kind of just silly in general because um, a review when you watch a reviewer play a uh, review a game or whatever there there's always gonna be some bias because this is a like just the way human. gaming works is like it's an interactive media and everyone's gonna have different viewpoints and just expecting someone to just lay down the general objective things about the game like if it runs well and stuff like that. It's like just expecting that kind of thing is, it's just unrealistic, and I I don't know. Like I said, that 
There's too much... I just get too much of a negative stigma with that guy. And... Just watching the little 15 minutes or so of that stream that I did, I just... I just kind of felt depressed. And again, I don't have anything against the guy, uh... Like... I, I don't necessarily have anything against uh, vo Voice Legend, but yeah, that... Hmm? This is nonsense. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know how you awesome. feel about the whole, the, the, the situation, but yeah, I just need to get that out of my system. about the state of gaming with the whole of this episode of the game. Hmm? How depressed are we when we want to talk about, about YouTubers we don't like instead of the game? <laughs> I mean... I pretty much drained all I needed to say about this game as it is. This is a... This is a, a fine enough level, I guess. Um, not really much to say about it. What? Oh, hmm. I must have dozed off there. Gully, looks like I let the fountain switch off. Here, take this orb and, um, don't mention my little nap to Hydra, okay? Hydra. What animal are they? Yeah, what are these things? Yeah, I feel like the... Let me see. I feel like Toys for Bob's gonna have them. Gonna have their work cut out for them, trying to redesign some of these characters. Yeah. I wonder what, is, what the voices are. I don't know what they are. Yeah, I wonder how they're gonna. how the voices are gonna be as well. Ah, I'm kind of back, so I'll just record, I'll re record a lot. <laughs> That's gonna be really weird sit hearing Tom Kenny be like, Where's Nasty Nork? Oh, torture. Like, that just. I can't. I can't picture Tom Kenny doing that. Uh. Uh. Okay. So, what is this? I okay, see egg. So this is kind of a puzzle. Um, you just have to put the items in specific locations, and then another item will pop out of said location, and you have to put that into, put that somewhere else, until you finally find uh, the professor's pencil. Um, which is kind of interesting. This is probably the most interesting part of the of the of this level. Ooh, don't poop that out. <laughs> All right. Leave this. Burn, burn it. No. Uh. I think this is like a basket somewhere. Can we put the ducky. How does that even work? Yeah, how does that work? Uh, you know that you should probably. We we saw like some ducks in the in the pool or like the river rather. Uh, so you should probably guess where we need to put this. Why am I getting flashed back to the end of any episode where we had to do a bunch of errands? Uh... They wanted an egg and then I had to trade a bunch of stuff. No. <laughs> it's sawdust. Paint. Wait. Dockers. Man, I haven't watched Edited in Eddie in so long. That was my childhood, yo. Okay, we got all the gems. Nice. I was worried about that. 
Mm -hmm. Alright. So this should be going to... Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Oh, hi. <laughs> Dub <laughs> multitasking. Gonna get the last kangaroo guide later. Um. And somehow the pencil was in there. Because. Because reasons. <laughs> My pencil! Now I can begin calculating the age of the universe again. <laughs> Take this orb. Alora says she thinks I'm going to lose it. Oh, goodness. Almost got all the orbs. Just like five more, I believe. Oh dear. Alright. So, we've got to track down one more kangaroo. Which. Uh, oh, he's just up here, okay. Good. Because I, I haven't really been focusing on these guys, I've just kind of been getting them on my pass through the level. Yeah, they basically work the same as, like, thieves and stuff, they just jump more. <laughs> so you have to do a bit more platforming to uh, catch them. I was gonna say, is the thing gonna show up? Wahoo! I'm back in business! Here, young dragon friend, take this! It's music. Oh. Alright, cool. Alright, I guess out. Yep. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. Well, at least there's no death. Okay, Bargaining I honestly have... Harry. Huh? Bargaining stage. <laughs> at, uh, I, okay, so at this point, I have no idea what the other levels are. <laughs> so... I we only had one more level well, until Rift, though. Consolation that you've collected so many yeah. orbs. My high-tech portal here will take you to Cloud Temples. Um... Oh, is this the one with that, that, uh, like, uh, stealth thing? Um, I guess so. Oh, yeah, okay, I remember this. Sure. The laugh sounded familiar. Yeah. But I like it's like one of those things where like you just need to Oh my goodness, that actually counted as a hit. That's cheap. You saw that, right? Friends have used the magic to take over the city. But like I like I like how that cutscene is like a nice show don't tell you know who's the good guy who who are the good guys and who are the bad guys uh i don't know if... strange level yeah um i don't know if uh, any of these stages have skill points in them so if i if we miss any of any uh, we're gonna have to uh do go back and try and do those I checked the wiki, there's no skill points in these later levels. Alright. We should be golden then. There's potentially missed 
We could have missed one earlier on, but I don't. I don't think we did. But hopefully uh, we don't have to do that. But you never know. Uh, what are your fe feelings towards this level? I have not. I didn't even remember the thing until until the really game came back to it. Hmm. It's at least a bit more interesting to look at than the others. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, man, like, like I... <clears throat> At this point in the game, I just... Th there's just not much I can say about any of this. Like, I don't know. I mean, in some ways, the, those enemies remind me of the wizards from Crash 3, I guess. Like, that's the extent- oh, hi. That's the extent of my, uh, commentary for this stage. <laughs> oh, man, I- I- I am- I'm scared for when I have to do Enter the Dragonfly, because if I'm running out of things to say for this game now, I'm gonna have a- Terrible time with that game. Well, I mean, there's only nine levels. That's true. Huh. Huh. Wow, this is... will make a boring video. Hmm. Alright, quick discussion of... Smash... Quick discuss Smash Bros. Um... The Last Resort. Oh, no. that guy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah to do stuff. Which is kind of interesting. Also, really awkward position for b baskets to be placed. Right, just saying. Yeah, I feel like with, like, games, the developers just thought, hey, let's try something new. Only members yeah. of my secret club are allowed to go there. I'm not leaving unless you hide behind that tree so you can't see me. <laughs> I like how, the, the, like, the uh -huh stuff isn't even in the text. Like, I, I just, um, I like to imagine that stuff is ad-libbed. So I guess we're just doing this. Like a reverse escort. Pretty much. You just have to follow him and not steer too close behind, too far behind. Or too close. Okay, I'm surprised that counted. Oh, dang it. <laughs> I'm too fast for anyone to follow. No one will ever find my hideout. <laughs> oh my goodness, what the hell is this guy? Alright, come on. Yeah, if he spots you, he'll like kind of look like kind of point at you or whatever. I'll worry about these later. Oh, hi, hi, dang it. What's your opinion on stealth? They belong in stealth games. <laughs> this is pretty random, to be fair, yeah. Yeah, I... Mm. I'm not entirely against stealthing games that don't have stealth as the main... as, like, the main concept, but, like... If you just do it one time, and it's very... 
bare bones and uh, just kind of not the not design the burst. I struggled to see what the point of even including what? the stealth in the Manage first place was. Me? You must be a member of my secret club after all. Why is she gonna Take this I feel like if you're gonna include stealth, you may as well uh, try to make it at least not feel shoehorned in or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's it's like yeah. Like this and random rhythm mini games are the bane of side missions in video games. Yeah. I mean, oh God, I the well, that's not good. Because oh like, gosh. you might, yeah, you might grab like a drink or something then. I have a drink. Okay, good. <laughs> For Pete's sake. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Yeah, the hiccups suck. Oh, slow down. Apparently this stage is too much for this game to handle. Um... What was I saying? Uh, the, uh... I don't know, like, uh... I, I... It does it like rhythm games, like, uh, rhythm mini games and stuff. Um... I'm I, I like I like rhythm games, so I it's not the f it's not necessarily the fact that um, of a game having a mini game section or whatever uh, that is the issue for me. It's it's an issue when that when said mini game is just a bad rhythm game. I understand the. I guess you probably stated it better than I ever could have. Mm. I understand the desire to shake things up, but you have to make sure that stuff is... Make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah, don't just put unique gameplay in just for the sake of it. Um, it's like, um... Oh, man. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I need to f focus on that. Because, <laughs> uh, like, uh, Kingdom Hearts... Not just two, not just two Atlantica, but like in general, they have a bad history uh, of really having pretty badly done rhythm mini games, because a min a rhythm mini game is not a rhythm mini game if it's not in like actually in sync with the music that's going on, and it's just press the buttons this like during this time or whatever. Like, if, they, if it's not actually rhythm-based, it kind of ruins the whole point, and it's just not fun to play. Well, the Atlantica's, the Atlantica portion actually have the rhythm, the, yeah, the rhythm mini game actually go with the song. I mean, it sometimes does, but for the most part, it just feels like you're just pressing buttons randomly. This super freeze power up will chill out the trolls, but we really need the bells to like ring. Like, there's um, ring if you charge I, into I, them. I don't know if it's be, been like proven fake or real at this point, but there's a um, like there was like a rumor or something going around uh, of like a apparently there's like a river mini game in Kingdom Hearts Frey, um, and. You know, if, if it's actually decent, then, I mean, I, that's that would be a fun distraction, but if it's anything like what we've had before, that's not really going to be good. <laughs> but yeah, we uh, have um, Ice Breath, which is very cool. First, first time in the series. Yep. It functions just like how the Super Flame does, where you have to, where you shoot like a a ball out. You can freeze enemies. Um, oh, there, there, okay. I was wondering what I was waiting, waiting for. Uh, and you have to just use these guys as platforms and just hit the bells. And yeah, this is pretty cool. I suppose you want an orb for doing that. 
Well, I'm afraid not. There's still one bell left. You can get to it by using the whirlwind behind me. I found so bored. Yeah. Ooh. Man. I could be uh, <laughs> over. Thanks, doing Spyro. doing I it, but think you could I feel it. like this Here, game and uh, the uh, one level shot. in Spyro 3 does more of the ice breath than Spyro 4 does. Which is sad because these are only in two, in two levels, where it's like a random ability you get just for that stage, whereas Spyro Enter the Dragonfly has it for a uh, actual like power up. That you keep. I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but like I, I don't remember much use of the ice breath in that game. You, it was just I, I just treated it like an extra attack. Yeah, like is there any point where like the game, like, makes you use it? You will need to, re you will require it at some point. Hmm. I, Cause I know the only thing I remember is like you have to use like you have to use specific breath powers to open gates in a hub world, but that's about it. That's all I remember. I think you did use that as the occasion for the occasional um plat uh, platform. Hmm. So I really do like I do like how Spyro Foreign like did had like four something different breaths. Like that was that was a cool new new feature to add. Like they like they really don't do that much with it. I mean, part that could mostly be down to the game being rushed, but yeah. Huzzah! We're almost done. All the major levels are done now. I believe we just need a speedway to do. Oh my goodness. Are there anything like fair, uh, things about um, Sparrow Two that uh, you, we haven't discussed yet that you want to bring up? We haven't talked about the music much. Uh huh? I mean, I guess we haven't. I mean, I don't really have much to say about Sparrow music-wise. Um, I kind they're nice atmospheric pieces, and they do what they need to, and they feel good when I'm playing the games, but they're not really tracks I'd listen to in my off- on my off time. Um, fair. I think... I actually prefer Spyro 1 and Year of the Dragons tracks over this one. I don't remember much of Spyro 1's soundtrack, but I, uh, there's... Uh, select few tracks in Spyro 3 that I get, I do really like. I think this might actually be my favorite speedway in this game. I'll probably be proven wrong soon, but... I mean, it's I one of the more linear ones so far. And if our ability for Crash Panic is toss anything, linear is great. Yeah. Because I... I, 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 I think the near games still have a place in, in the gaming world because you know, having a uh, linear but um, um, was it a, a linear but focused ga gameplay design can be just as good if not better some in some cases than a really open one. It depends how you go about it, obviously, but you just have like one direct path. 
Yeah, that's not skull point material. I don't. I'm not surprised. Uh, we had to just uh, focus on making. Uh, huh? For the last speedway, you need. Goodness, of course, my laptop is lagging. Uh. Under, in under one minute and ten seconds. Uh, I can probably do that then. I, I just messed up a lot at the end there. But like... I don't know, I, 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 I do enjoy linear level design when it's like done right. And cause there's, there's, there's a reason why um, I really enjoy the Sonic and Shadow stages in SA2. Uh, but find the Sonic stages, the modern Sonic Station forces to be kind of lacking. Because, like, in SA2, in SA2 like, uh, you constantly, you can't, and, and un unleash flat matter, um, you're constantly, uh, uh, constantly need to do, uh, need to do things, and nothing, not, nothing is really, like, brain dead. And you're constantly, it keeps you in the game. And, uh. Um, oh, you're not making it. Nope. As you know, it's fun level design that keeps you, keeps you into it. Whereas Forces is very, is way too easy. Like, the, the linear part of that game is not, is not really the main issue for me. It's the lack of challenge, really. And, um. No, games like SA2 and Unleashed, I think, although they are more lin more linear than most Sonic games, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And, um, you know, as, again, as long as you have a good challenge and this, the level design is fun and mem memorable to go through, um, I'm generally fine with a game being more linear. And that's why I enjoy uh, the Crash games so much, because... They're linear, but they have a direct, like, a really good focus, two and three sp uh, specifically. Um, and okay, I, I'm just gonna get, kill these guys first. Oh, there we go. But like, yeah, Crash Two and Three in particular have a very good focus, and. Um, the just general like level like platforming challenge, I just enjoy for Crash. And I don't know, just having having a more simpler design game in an age where open world seems to be the norm is very refreshing because you don't really we don't really see games like that as much nowadays. All right, Spyro. Are you ready that's to my... fly out my plane? I just fixed it. Yeah, that's my run over. <laughs> sure it won't crash now. <coughs> okay, Spyro. Here's what you've got to do. I've got the plane on remote control. So all you have to do is hit the targets with your machine gun. Press circle to fire the gun and use the D-pad or analog stick to aim. Uh, this is okay, some bad. This is a pretty fun challenge. Just kind of hold the button down and just aim near the balloons. Because there's a little bit of an auto aim going on here. And the blimps. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably agree. This is probably one of the better speedways. In general, but they wanted this to like it's they wanted you to do a relatively easy one but towards the end. Yeah. Because you don't get with this, like you don't necessarily have to be very accurate. You just kind of aim near. Okay. Oh. Oh wow. Okay, that that kind of sucked. Hey. Okay, don't I, okay, let's not be that careless then. 
But even still, this isn't the hardest thing in the world. And uh, you just aim in the general area. It will just lock on for you, pretty much. Other than that though, not much to say about this. What exactly is this supposed to accomplish anyway? <laughs> Oh. Oh. Yes. Okay, it still counts. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, good. Hey, you nailed all of the targets. It must be because you had such a good. What is that? So what? Oh, what exactly did we need to do that for? You could have just given me the orb. Whatever. All orbs have been collected. And we got 64. And, oh, okay, I was gonna say. Um. Let's just, let, okay, yeah, let's just double check. We got 100% on all of this. Yeah, we should be good. Five thousand nine hundred is kind of a weird number to end on, though. The money bags has the rest of our gems. I just remember. Oh yeah, that's true, right? I guess we'll see what the actual. And now the steepest. Yep. Steepest staircase in history. Yep. <laughs> And as much uh, as I've ragged on Ripto in this playthrough, this is actually the I think the best boss in the in this in the series, let alone final boss. <laughs>